You're here to understand why RFM matters in e-commerce. So let's find out. Back in the 70s, direct mailing was too expensive. They needed to save money. Their reasons were to separate those who bought from them regularly from those who stopped buying, who weren't worth addressing. Now, we don't want to save money on sending emails to the right customers. We want to separate the ones that are buying regularly from the ones that stop buying so that we send them relevant messages. And here's why. The game of e-commerce is not about sending packages from A to B. It's a habit forming game. And these are the three arts of habit formation according to this guy that actually improved my life significantly. His name is Charles Duhigg and you can check out The Power of Habit, his book. So these are the three arts of habit formation. Reminder, routine and the reward. RFM allows you to change the rewards and change the reminders for customers according to their RFM segment. But what RFM means? RFM is essential to separate the ideal customers and exceeding their expectations from the toxic customers, the ones that doesn't worth your attention as the other ones. It's clear that the repeat customers are the ones that matters after a point onwards, as you can see in this example. But the most important customers are the ideal customers, right? The ICPs. One single ICP generates margin as much as 376 low value customers. It's not fair or smart to treat everyone the same. So RFM stands for recency, frequency and monetary value. Recency means how recently a customer bought from you. Frequency, how many orders they placed. And monetary value is the total value of the orders from that particular customer. The skill that you're using can be from one to three to four or to five. If you have less than 50,000 customers, my suggestion is to use a scale from one to three. If you have less than 500,000 customers, you can use a scale from one to four. And if you have more than 500,000 customers, you can use a scale from one to five. In terms of the recency, the lowest score will be for the customers that placed their last order, let's say, two years or one year ago. The highest score for recency would be for the customers that bought most recently from your store. If we go for the frequency, that's the same thing. You give the lowest score for customers that placed a single order and the five will give to, to the customers that placed more than X orders, right? The best customers from your total number of customers. While the monetary value is the same thing. You split those customers to equal percentiles of 20% if you are using a scale from one to five, right? So if we go further, we will end up having different type of customers. The about to dump you customers, they used to buy constantly, but not anymore. So their scores are two, three, and four. Two, two for recency, three for frequency, and four for the monetary value. So you can think of whatever type of methods, like writing them a handwritten letter, giving them a courtesy call and ask them about their experience and why they stopped buying from you, or giving them a special treatment. The same thing goes for the potential lovers as well. The potential lovers are customers with a very high potential, as the name says. They have the highest score for recency, the highest score for monetary value, and the lowest score for frequency, right? The idea is to give them a relevant treatment according to how important they are for your business. Then you will end up having separate type of customers like 555, the ones that get the highest scores for frequency, for monetary and for recency are the soulmates and then potential lovers and then ex-lovers, right? Ex-lovers would be the ones with the lowest score for recency, the highest for frequency and the highest for the monetary value. So that's a visual representation of how this works. You have the new passions that are having their first order and they have a high revenue, then after 30 days, if they don't place any order, we can keep the labeling, right? You, we can decide to keep the same status as new passions. But if they place another order, we can label them as the potential lovers. And if they place two orders, they are being transformed into lovers. After 90 days, if some of them place two more orders, they will be transformed into soulmates. If they place only one order, they will become lovers. And as you can see, these are, are blending or over, right? As you can see, they are flowing from one group to, to another as time goes by. We will have potential lovers with zero plus orders. 
And if they don't place any single order, they will be labeled as not to lose, right? Because these are important customers and the business doesn't want to lose them. So out of 100 customers at the beginning, we will end up having six soulmates that placed in total six orders. 16 lovers that placed in total four orders, 13 ex-lovers because after 180 days, if they don't place any order, they will be transformed into ex-lovers if they placed uh, four orders up until that moment. And 65% of them will be the Don Juans. Don Juans means one night standards. They've started the, the relationship with the brand with the highest customer lifetime value, but they haven't placed any order in six months. Let's see how this looks with the real store in Omniconvert. We can go to this tab of segmentation under the customer analytics and we'll be able to see how many soulmates there are there, how many lovers, how many new passions and so on. We can see the share of customers and we can see the share of margin and the share of revenue. This is important in particular because that is allowing you to understand how much can you spend to acquire those type of customers. If we want to go in depth, we can go to the general tab. We can scroll down to RFM points. Here is where you can actually adjust the scale from one to five to four to three. And we can see how many customers are in each of those groups. And we can look at how many customers are in each of those groups. If we go back to the RFM score mapping, we'll be in a position to see how many customers are in the soulmates, right? So if we zoom in a bit, we'll be in a position to see that we have 1,260 customers that get the highest scores for recency, frequency, and monetary value. We'll see also on each of these cards, there are customers that are sharing the same recency, frequency, and monetary value scores. But not only that, if we decide that the soulmates are not enough to keep in a separate group, we can simply drag and drop them, and here they are. They are in the lovers uh, tab right now. So. After you do this, we go to the segmentation tab and we'll be in a position to see what is the NPS for each RFM group and because we can track all sorts of things. What are they buying? How many orders they've placed? And the most important thing is that we can see the transitions, right? Exactly like we go into Google Analytics and we look at things like the revenue by channel, we can see the margin, the customer count or the customer transitions from each RFM group. Uh, mainly this dynamic of the revenue is showing us if this business is uh, healthy or not. Because if we see that most of the revenue is coming from the soulmates, kudos for that. That means you can, let's say, stop or uh, decrease the marketing budget, but your soulmates are going to be there. That means the habits are being formed. So going back, what you can understand with the RFM is who are the customers that spend the most, who are the most loyal customers that come back to buy again, who are the newest customers, which are about to uh, dump you and who have you already lost. The impact of the RFM segments is that you can go even deeper than that. You can look at things that as the share of customers, the share of margin and things like what is the ratio between customer lifetime value and customer acquisition cost? What is the margin per customer? And as you can see in this example, the breakups, which are 16,000 from customer uh, database, they are actually losing money because of these customers, because the revenue per customer is 27, while the customer acquisition cost is 33 uh, pounds in this example, right? So what is important is to understand how to treat each of those customers differently. And I'm going to show you just that. So let's look at how to treat each of those customer groups. Soulmates, for instance, if you look at the total lifetime number of customers, 1.7% of them, 10% of the total revenue. If we look at the last month, a fifth of your customers were soulmates and they generated 19% of the revenue. So you have different goals and you have different steps to achieve those goals for each of these RFM groups. For instance, for the soulmates, the main goal is to keep them happy, not to lose them and to acquire more like them. While the next steps would be to monitor their customer experience in real time, treat their objections in real time and research this because these are your ideal customer profiles and build lookalike audiences based on them. Then the new passions are customers with high recency, high monetary and low frequency. If you look at the total lifetime of the shop, they are not that important. But if you look at the last month's revenue, you can realize that, hey, they generated 
24% uh, of our revenue. So the main goal is to persuade them to place the second order and the next steps could be to surprise and delight them and I leave it up to you to get creative over here to run cohort A-B testing so that you can identify how to onboard the next ones better and run tailor-made campaigns to them. Then the lovers in the total lifetime of the shop, they can make up to around 5% of the total customers and they generate 25% of the revenue. And, but if you look at the last month's figures, they could be 12% of the customers with 14% of the revenue. The main goal is to, of course, transform them into soulmates. And the next steps, treat their objections in real time, so nurture them properly, run tailor-made campaigns for them and acquire more like them. Last but not the least are the ex-lovers. These customers bought a long time ago. They have lowest recency, but highest frequency and highest monetary values, right? So last month, they haven't participated in terms of uh, the revenue, but on the total lifetime of the shop, they could be generating something like 25 to 30% of your total revenue. The main goal is to understand what stopped them from buying so that you can re-engage them and also to understand what you should be fixing in terms of customer experience or product assortment or marketing campaigns so that you can keep them coming. The idea is to treat their objections and to run tailor-made campaigns for them. If you can't reactivate too many of them, don't worry about it. The main idea is to not lose the ones that you currently have by gaining the wisdom from this type of customer research that you make on the ex-lovers. So this dynamic is what matters, right? Looking at each of those uh, customer groups and looking at the distribution of the revenue will be transformative for your business because you can understand how your email marketing, how your retention marketing efforts are paying off, who are the customers that are uh, participating the most in terms of generated margin and revenue. That was it from my end. If you want to hear more about these methods, check out our CVO Academy. There's a CVO course over here. One is an introductory course and it's another one for customer behavior. And if you have questions for me and my team, let us know because we are here to help you make progress with your e-commerce.